So this is why it's important to check first. <laughs> so I removed one pot light from my ceiling. As I said, they're spring clips, so they're not hard to work with in this case. And you can see inside this cavity of the ceiling exactly how I was talking. They've got drywall on top of old lath board. So for me, trying to use a stud finder to find the floor joists is a bit of a trick. Normally that's one route you can take. The second option, and it's pretty well foolproof, the only downside is it does create a little hole. I would use sometimes a coat hanger on a cordless drill, and I'll send that coat hanger into the ceiling space and essentially use that as a feeler. You'll be able to know, you'll know for sure when you find a floor joist because you're going to feel something solid. And when you press that into the ceiling, you're not turning it all the time, you're only turning it to get through the first layer. Once you're inside the cavity, it can be moved by hand. And if you press it all the way up into the cavity and feel nothing, you know that you've got an open space to work with. But that could basically be used to determine your layout for something like this, or to find a floor joist and then know where to go from there. Uh, let's see if this will work here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to do my best to do this here without knocking you over. So using a tape measure, I can stick it inside the cavity, and I know that my floor joist is right there. Now this isn't 100% accurate, but it's giving me a pretty darn good idea. I can now assume that 16 inch on center was the measurement that was used when these floor joists were installed. So if I have a floor joist here, the outside edge of a floor joist, and I measure over 16 inches, I know now that the next cavity is right in this zone. Right in this area, floor joist follows that. So basically I have a good estimate that there's a floor joist right here. So now I have to decide if I'm going to put the speakers in this available cavity or in this available cavity. And I'm thinking for the sake of the way the living room is, I'll probably use this cavity closer to the pot light. Um, however, it is going to be in front of the trim as I was talking about earlier. And that should give me a nice result and hopefully give me the sound that I'm looking for. I'm going to show you guys the cavity that I have to work with and how I was able to figure out the location upstairs. We are now inside the closet upstairs where I was pointing to tell you that that's where I fished the HDMI cable to the TV. So that cable going into the uh, top plate is for the HDMI cable that goes down to the TV on the main floor. Right there. So that wall in relation to where I am now uh, does go in this direction. This beam in front of my eyes here is part of that uh, archway with the pocket doors. So if I look into the cavity this direction, I should be able to see nothing. So let's stick the camera down there. I'll put you, I'll put you upside down for a moment. That's the inside of the joist space. So I know now what I'm up against and working with. Um, a trick to be able to see down there would be using a mirror to reflect and look down or one of my favorites is to grab your cell phone because everybody has a cell phone and turn it on to video make sure your light is set to the on hit record stick your phone down in the hole and have a look inside your cavity see what you're up against, pull it out, and then watch your video. So the short little video that I just made now gives me a view as to what's inside that choice, that joist space, just the cross piece. So ultimately, nothing's in my way. Awesome. And we'll delete that just so I don't lose all the memory on my phone. So it's, it's really not too complicated. Um, now, if, if you were really worried about the location of your ceiling in relation to the floor joists, here's a trick. And I usually do this myself using the coat hanger. 
I did make a hole here. I just have to find it. Once upon a time, I made a hole. And I sent a coat hanger up. And I don't know where it is. I could send it up the same hole, I suppose, and find it. But basically, if you send a coat hanger up tight against that wall, and you find it inside your hole, you then know exactly where you're looking based on where the floor joist is. So you could center something or you could make sure that you're at the floor joist if you had to fix something to it or you could avoid it if you had to avoid it like in our scenario. Um, I'm going to send that coat hanger back up and I'll show you guys where it ended up inside this cavity and from that point I can use it to measure and I can make sure that my speakers are going to go in the right spot the first time without having to repair or patch anything. Okay, so back down on the main floor, this is my piece of coat hanger. I usually keep something like this in my tool pouch. Uh, handy tip, get yourself a pair of linesmen or pliers or whatever. And a lot of times I'll use part of the handle here and, and pinch and squeeze and I make almost like a drill bit style end on the coat hanger. So when you do put this on a cordless drill and you're turning it, it actually has the ability to cut through uh, the drywall and the lath board or whatever you may be trying to go through. Now this hole was here from when I did the uh, HDMI cable drop. I just haven't bothered to put a, a little dab of filler over it yet. So putting it back in with just a pair of pliers isn't really any issue. Um, I am going through lath boards so I need a bit of resistance doing this but it's not like a very difficult process to stick that through. So now that that's in I can go back upstairs, we can look in that closet, in that hole, and see where this coat hanger is in relation to the floor joist. So based on where this pot light landed, that we know there's a joist here, the other joist should be about here, so I'm probably going to use a measurement about, let's see, let's just guess. I'll probably end up, oops, I'll probably end up somewhere around the 22 inch mark for my center. For those lights but I should be able to measure easily off of that coat hanger to determine where I want to park the center of those speakers we'll bring one of the templates along just for fun I left my flashlight downstairs but that shouldn't make too much of a difference looking into the hole I can see the coat hanger is right here so as I kind of guessed I'm in the forward more section Forward, forward most section of the space. I wouldn't want to go any closer to that joist. So, to slide that template in there, just to get a look. So we have a pretty good idea of what's going on. If I lay the template in here like this, I know that I've got clearance everywhere for what I'm trying to do. And then to the center of my template, I'll measure from that coat hanger I can go downstairs and replicate that and then the template layouts are just a matter of measuring off the wall. So I'm just going to measure from my coat hanger now to the center of my template and we're going to see downstairs once I draw that on the ceiling where everything goes. Alright, so measuring off the wall to the hole where my coat hanger is and then adding three inches to get to the center of my cutout means the center of my cutout will be at 21, oops, a noodle, will be at 21 inches. That's what happens when you let your cats play with a noodle. Eventually you find it and you kill it. And basically, X marks the spot, then I replicate that on the other side of the room. And then what I'll do is take my template find the center of it and from there trace my line of what needs to be cut out. So I'm going to get the circle drawn on the ceiling. It's boring, you're not missing much uh, and I'll follow up when I'm ready to start cutting the holes.